Oil pressure can tell you a lot about your vehicle and give you hints as to the condition of your engine and how it's performing. So by the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know to use an oil pressure gauge and understand what it's telling you. To start, you'll need to buy a pressure gauge like this with the proper fittings for your engine. A kit like this costs only around $25 to $30 on Amazon. In addition, you'll need a ratchet, a deep socket for your oil sensor, and a socket for your fitting. To know what fitting you'll need, there are three main kinds. There is BSPT, also known as DIN2999, and this is British Standard Pipe Thread Tapered. This is found on most Japanese main vehicles. We then have BSPP, which is also British Standard Pipe Thread, however, it's non-tapered. This is found on most European made cars. And then we have the NPT, National Pipe Thread. This is found on most US made cars. In our case, we have a Toyota, which is Japanese, so BSPT is likely our fitting. So to begin, we need to find our oil pressure sensor, also known as the oil sender. Generally, the sensor is near your oil filter, so you can start by looking around your oil filter. In my case, it's on the side of the engine and we can access it through the wheel well. It'll typically be a connection like this with a single wire. What we want to do is remove the sensor and replace it with our fitting. We'll start by removing the plug. To do that, it's fairly simple. We press on the button on the side and pull it out. Next, place the catch can underneath. Removing the fitting will leak a little bit of oil. Get your socket and remove the sensor. With the sensor removed, we can confirm that we have the correct fitting. Place the threads of the sensor side by side with the fitting and make sure they interlock. Also, ensure the diameter is correct and perfect. This is the proper fitting. Thread the fitting in by hand and tighten till snug. A quick warning, do not over tighten this. Especially with the BSPT, which is a tapered thread, this will result in breaking the aluminum block. Most vehicles should be torqued to only around 15 pounds foot. And now we can get our gauge and we simply push it over the fitting and you'll hear it click. With everything connected, we can turn on our engine. Some gauges have a one-way valve like this, which stores the highest pressure reached. So we'll have to purge the valve a little bit to reset the pressure. Get a paper towel underneath the valve and press the valve to reset the pressure. Oil pressure will vary from automobile to automobile, but for most modern vehicles at idle, you want to see pressures between 25 and 60 PSI. However, anything above 10 PSI is considered acceptable and anything over 65 to 80 PSI is considered too high. It's important, however, to let your engine get up to operating temperature. This is because viscosity becomes thinner as the engine heats up, so your pressure will drop after five to 10 minutes. 10 minutes later, our vehicle is at operating temperature and our pressure is dropped from 25 to 10 PSI. Obviously, this is not good and there's something wrong with our oil pressure. So what does low oil pressure mean? If oil pressure gets too low, it's not getting enough oil throughout the system. And while your engine may still be running adequately, this is causing improper lubrication, which is causing your engine components to wear out prematurely, causing other costly engine issues down the line. So what is causing this? The most common reasons for this are low oil, dirty oil, a blocked filter, a worn oil pump, an oil grade that is too thin for your engine, or an excessive oil leak, which could be external or internal. For a detailed video on how to find, diagnose, and repair low oil pressure, check out this video. But what if we have high oil pressure? Let's say we have 85 PSI. The most common reasons for high oil pressure are dirty oil filters and debris in your engine. In your engine, there could be routes and ports that are clogged, be it by gasket material, rust, or other debris, and this will cause more back pressure and cause your pressure to increase. If you have high oil pressure, you'll want to start by replacing that filter. All tools used in this video are down in the description below.